All right, welcome back. So last time um, we made this little uh, UI system that reacts to our player's health. Uh, we can take knockback, we can give knockback, we can take damage, breakable pots. We got little signs here that have a little bit of UI. We've got all kinds of stuff going on, but we're gonna make this so that it works a little bit better. So right now, um, I went back and forth about my whole uh, level map system, if I was going to use Tiled or if I'm going to use the Unity Tile Map. I'm going to use the Unity Tile Map because using the Sprite Atlas and uh, changing all of the filtering seemed to work. It seems to be good now. So I'm going to be using this. But my plan is I want to have this be 25 by 25 for each room. Right now this room is 26 by 22. And I kind of like, I really like these like single transition spaces between places, so I'm going to leave those. I'm just going to resize this so it's 25 by 25, and I'm going to make some other rooms to go with it. So um, that's what we're going to get started on today. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my grid object. I'm going to choose my collision layer, which is everything that the player can collide with. I'm going to bring up my tile palette, dock that with the scene, go to my eraser brush, and I'm going to erase everything on these edges here. So, all right, now, my scene right now is 26 wide, like I said, so I'm going to go to my ground brush as well, and, oops, put myself on the ground map, and delete that. So now it's 25 wide, I need to get it to be 25 tall, it's 22 right now, so there's 23, 24, 25. So that should be 25 by 25. Now, I'm sure that there's an easier way to do this, but let me just show you how I'm gauging the size of my rooms here. Uh, I have this empty game object that just has a red dot on it. It's right down there. And if I go into move mode, you can see 25 on X, negative 25 on Y. So we're good. All right, so I'm going to turn that back off so it's not in the way. And I'm going to fast forward through me building these rooms. So, yeah, uh, bear with me here. Okay, so I have my... Um, environments built. Let's talk about the room transfer system a little bit here. So first of all, um, I want to make it so that this upper corner right here is at zero, zero. And I just want to make sure that that's what's happening here. So if I zoom in, cool, that upper corner is at zero, zero. Now the camera has a um, variable called size. And what that size is, is it's the distance from the center of the screen or where the camera is to the top of the screen. So right now it's five units from where the camera is in the scene to the top of the scene, which means that the camera should always be, since my size is five, should always be five units away from the top. So when we're starting out here, if my top is zero, then my camera's maximum should be negative 5 on Y, and negative 20 is its min position, because negative 5 on Y would make sure that it's never going uh, to a point where an orthographic size of 5 isn't going to take it outside of the room. Now, if I made my orthographic size 6, then this would need to be negative 6 and negative 19. Now, for the uh, X part, the uh, ratio that I have right now set up for my display is four by three, which means that I have four units this way to three units that way. So four by three would have the same ratio here. So I'm gonna change my orthographic size to six, which is gonna zoom us out just a little bit. But since it's a multiple of three, I can now make it really, really easy to set up what my camera constraint should be on the x-axis. So my y min, or sorry, my y max is negative six. My Y min is negative 19. Uh, that's going to be 3 times 2. So I need to be 3 times 2 away from 0. So my min position, or sorry, not 3 times 2, 4 times 2. My min position is going to be 8. And then 
uh, over here, I'm going to be 8 less than 25, which is 17. So if I try that out now, I'm on whole number values because I'm using my aspect ratio and the orthographic size together. So here we go. It's all right this way. Let's check down. It's all right down. It's all right right. So there we go. Now, when we go to our scene and we have our room change, so this first room transfer here, let's look at its box collider. Oh, all right, cool. I need to move that a little bit. My second room transfer also needs to be moved. So this room transfer should be changing the Y position by 25 uh, because we're going up. This room transfer should be changing the Y position by negative 25 because we're going down. And the player change is negative 2. Now, if I go make another room transfer, so let me go to my prefabs, grab a room transfer, put it right there. I'm going to want to change this box collider. Here. Doot. Doot. Make it pretty small. And then pretty big here too. This is going to change nothing on Y because we don't need to change the up and down, but it's going to change the X negative 25. And if I duplicate this again, I'm going to move it just right there. And my X change is now going to be 25. Now, I don't want to have these room transfers cluttering everything, so I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this room transfers. And I'm going to put all my room transfers in there. So I'm just going to grab them all here, put them in that right there. Cool. Now this one, I think it was, th no, nope, it's two. This one. Um, I'm going to grab my, oops, there we go. Just to remember what I'm doing, I'm going to uh, go to three, which is the one that goes back in here. Uh, this is going to grab my place text and my place text and the place name is the the homestead just like it was for room transfer one so let's give this a try on the left hand side now so since I'm using the correct orthographic size and I know what I want my aspect ratio to be everything ooh, holy cow all right, let's find out what's going on. Where's my player at? Oh, he went up for some reason. That's weird. Where'd my camera go? Where's my main camera? There it is. My camera went to negative 33. All right. Oh, okay, that's why. Da, da, da. Sometimes I'm not the brightest person in the world. So let's look at room transfer two. We want to have our camera change X be negative 25. No, it seems like it should be right. So our min position should become 8 minus 25, and our max position should become... 17 minus 25. Let's look at our camera movement script here to make sure that it's right. So, our round position. Okay, let's take a look at our room change script. All right, so on trigger enter, cam in position plus equals cam max position plus equals. Transform position. Hmm. Why did it jump all the way back to negative 33? Oh, yeah. And then also, I need to change my player change on y is 0. And then on x should be negative 2. And then this other room transfer on x is positive 2. And on Y is zero. 
Um, hmm. Unless I have like my X and Y backwards or something. So, oh, oh, hey, way different that time. Okay. Um, okay, hold on one second. Okay, so here's what's going on. Um, so our player here, as you'll remember, has two triggers on them. One for collision and one for the world. So it's registering both of those triggers. And so in some cases it was doubling the, the movement it was doing. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go into our uh, room move script. And uh, we're going to go look at the on trigger intro 2D, collider 2D other. We have other dot compare tag player and other dot is trigger. Um, let's do not is trigger so that we're using the collision one and not other dot is trigger. So if it's the the real one, the one that isn't the knockback one. So let's save that. Let's go back into Unity here, and I want to monitor my main camera. So as soon as this is done compiling and everything, we'll take a look at our main camera. So right now we've got our max and min there. So I'm going to walk over here into this. So right now, let's focus on the X's here because the Y shouldn't change. So max is 17. That should go down to negative 8. Let's see. All right, there we go. And make sure it works okay in this room. All right, and then when we go back over... Cool, and we got the little text like we should. All right, so now I'm just going to put in the rest of the triggers here just so that I can move around the little world that I've created. And I'll fast forward through that too. All right, so other than all of them having text, uh, which I will change, um, only three of them should have text, so let's grab all of them here, turn need text off on all of them, and then let's just find the ones that need text. So I think it's one needs text, three needs text, and five needs text. The rest of them don't. So there we go. Um, we've got our little world set up. I have plans for, for all of this. We'll have a treasure chest somewhere. This is going to lead to a little dungeon, and we'll do the, the inside of the house pretty soon. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's today's video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord, where I haven't been chatting too much lately, but uh, I will definitely be chatting more as we go on. And yeah, everybody out there, have yourselves a wonderful day.